So this is a continuation of uh, who is Lucifer, and um, well, Lucifer is a fallen angel. That's what they said, but that means a fallen messenger, a dropout servant of the next level. Now, just because you're a servant of the next level doesn't make you into a uh, uh, next level member that has a next level vehicle or body <clears throat> that's non-mammalian, that's not capable of going backwards. It's uncorruptible or incorruptible, uh, as it says in, uh, <clears throat> in the New Testament. Um, and what is, how, is, how is it un uncorruptible? Well, if you can no longer participate in human behavior, then uh, you're not able to go backwards. There's a point of no return to where you can't go backwards. Uh, I don't know if that's... Uh, Tiendo said that you will always have the option to uh, uh, not be connected to the next level. So I don't know, <clears throat> you know, if there is uh, some possibility that an individual individual could leave the, the next level's membership and the crew, uh, the crew that, that they're on or they're in the lab that they're working for, and basically uh, um, take a spacecraft of some sort and uh, go somewhere. And uh, you know, try to start up their own creative uh, garden or whatever. I don't know what they would do. It would be like, uh, I mean, to me, it, it sounds stupid. But uh, I guess maybe it's possible, uh, or you could choose to just not do anything. But um, once you've tasted of who you're working for and you know who you're working for, and you know what they're doing, and when you've received the joy of participating in that, in whatever respect that you're doing it, um, and, and, and you get to work with individuals that you enjoy working with, you, you are in a condition of eternal happiness. Because, uh, and so why would you do anything else? Right? If you're totally happy, why would you do anything else? And uh, and when there's extended growth to where you can do more things, and uh, and you could even operate more than one vehicle at a time, and there's challenges. Uh, you know, everything isn't just laid out for you. Um, so basically, once once you've proved your trustworthiness enough to the next level, which is what a large part of the classroom is, is proving to the older member that you can be trusted. And how, can, how do they know that you can be trusted? Well, by, by their giving you all kinds of things to do that your vehicle may not, well, your vehicle will not want to do initially unless you make it do it. Like your vehicle, if it likes butter, does not want to stop eating butter. And yet we stopped eating butter. And, uh, and for a time, and then we had butter in limited amounts. Well, uh, the vehicle also wants to have what it wants, when it wants it, if it can get it. And that was a big stumbling block for some individuals in the classroom. Uh, uh, and uh, um, uh, someone that came to mind that I don't think would mind me bringing it up was Rick Cody. Uh, and there was like an outstanding joke in a sense that Ricotti wanted to go out and have pizza while he was in the classroom. And so he wanted to just get up and go and do it. He didn't want to have to go through channels or, or uh, you know, you know or wait for pizza to come up on the menu, which it really didn't very often. And we went out for pizza a few times. But uh, that's, just, that's just an example of he wanted to do what he wanted to do when he wanted to do it. And that, that basically took him out of the classroom a number of times, but it didn't stop his love for his older member. It just meant that he wasn't able to control his vehicle to the degree that he could stick it out. But in the end, he controlled his vehicle enough to where he was 
he knew that there was no place for him on this planet anymore. He had nothing to do here that was going to satisfy him anymore uh, after he left. And, uh, and so he decided that he needed to go. And so, uh, so he laid down his life as well um, a short time after uh, the larger body of uh, believers and uh, active students did. So now those said that all the students that went with him were not necessarily going to receive an issue of a next level vehicle. In other words, one that's not corruptible anymore. So some of them uh, would receive a body. They would all receive a body, I believe. But the body they would receive would be a body that was still corruptible in some fashion. Now, I don't know if that would be a body like Adam had to where it was capable of um, activating the organ systems that uh, would allow for reproduction and uh, digestion of food and things like that. And those said that for some, initially when they got there to the next level and they got issued a new vehicle, uh, they might have to have a little thing, a little bit to consume, like a, a little pill, or, or they might need to um, spend a little time underneath a light, a grow light at some point. And at one point, uh, we, we did have a grow light, and, and we, wrap, uh, we put it on like a stool, uh, over a stool, and we, sit, we would sit in the stool just one at a time, or maybe there were two positions for it, and... Uh, and they, and they had, and Doe made like a, uh, a, um, a veil, they put a veil around it so that you could see that there was somebody in there, but um, uh, it gave you the sense that you were in a little pod of some sort, and you were, you were sitting on the stool, and you, I, I think the procedure was that you could use it you know, once or twice a day, it was optional. At first, it was a mandatory. Most things that they gave us had a mandatory nature to them at first, and then they became optional, and then and then sometimes they were discontinued altogether, and that's what happened with this. Um, uh, <clears throat> and that's what happened with meditations, uh, although th some things were never discontinued, <clears throat> they just weren't emphasized, but they were always tools that we could use. And meditation was one of those, and the meditations were given uh, uh, that I've spoken about before, and actually are on one of the YouTube videos uh, that I put out. That is actually the audio of the classroom. You can uh, hear something about. Oh, I just remembered that I don't think I posted that one, so I need to find that and and post it. Uh, but it was the meditation where you're sitting basically and, and envisioning uh, the light coming from the next level come as light coming into the top of your head through the pineal gland and going through your every cell of your body, healing every cell of your body and visualizing it moving as quickly or as slowly as you want. Uh, but, you know, not just going through the motions, actually doing it and, uh, and believing that it's going to heal you. And I use that when I have aches and pains and toothaches and everything else that we uh, experience, especially as our vehicles get older. And, uh, and I, in addition to that, I asked the next level to help me with things. And sometimes that help means going to the dentist. So, you know, it's not like uh, you would use that exclusively. Um, so, uh, because basically you don't want to be interfered with by your vehicle. Because uh, the vehicle can basically uh, drag you down to where you have very little energy um, for um, uh, doing the will of your older member uh, and pulling on the older member's mind. How do you pull on your older member's mind? By asking, by seeking, by desiring, uh, whether it's in words or not, by desiring to know what our older members would do and think about any subject and in any circumstance. On the spot or 
uh, in the future. If you're planning to do something or thinking about doing something, asking your older members how to approach it, what they would do, how they, whether this was something to put their energy into, it, and 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 you you can assume that if you're talking to T and O, they will in some way answer you. Anyway, I'm off the topic of uh, uh, who is Lucifer. And uh, that includes uh, um, who is Satan? Is Satan some beast with horns and a tail? Um, uh, well, uh, absolutely not. Uh, most likely not. Let's put it that way. It doesn't mean that there isn't a possibility that there are human equivalent beings that were in a previous civilization on this planet or on another planet that were humanoid and could walk and talk like humans uh, but that would have some growth of horns in their head and, uh, and could have potentially have a tail. Those, that's altogether possible. So the folklore and uh, um, but would they carry a pitchfork? Well, uh, Moses carried a staff, okay? Uh, or and, and some humans carry weapons, of, cor of course, right, to, to fight. So uh, um, could humans be militant? Well, obviously, yes. So um, and could they have a red skin tone? Absolutely, yes. Um, so it's not like you know, it's not like the depictions are impossible. The, the problem is relative to our human environment um, uh, it, it's uh, it's not something that we can really conceive of as being real so it does detriment to getting to a real place in our heads um, for the sake of our vehicles that have a limited ability to under, understand what is equivalently real relative uh, to the human existence that we experience. So I mean you can you can have, make up all kinds of things that vehicles might look like like on Star Wars and in, in the bar scene and one of the early Star Wars movies um, and it doesn't mean that those vehicles are not possible but it it uh, you know it, the combinations may be pretty illogical, and they may be combinations that were created by human and space alien genetic engineering. And when I say space alien, I'm not talking about next level members. Although the next level members uh, do draw from individuals that have some circulation in space that came from different star systems but that were allowed to come to this star system uh, in order to potentially for some of them to have the opportunity to participate in an overcoming classroom in order to get an incorruptible body and an eternal body and Tiendo said that that um, during the briefing that they experienced that T, T actually remembered uh, that was um, that there were other individuals from star different star systems that were also um, choosing to lose their current physical bodies that were issued to them at some point because uh, by the next level uh, that that probably had a uh, a longer lifespan that could be who knows how long and uh, or that uh, they were able to uh, genetically um, uh, keep that flesh alive to where it was basically the same tree genetic tree as the um, original um, so-called fallen angels, uh, dropouts, renegades from a next level classroom so that they would have the same characteristics as for instance uh, the original vehicle that was that had the soul in it that that became 
uh, uh, a domestic member of the next level that had minimal uh, tasks uh, for the next level with some circulation in space, um, but then dropped away and went their way and ba basically then when, the, when that planet or the Earth civilization was recycled, like the story of Atlantis, the story of the flood, all the different stories of floods around, which it might be the story of the, the same story of, uh, uh, it probably is the same story of the last recycling period, you know, some 7,000, 6,800 years ago, whatever it was exactly. And uh, so that's who Lucifer is. He's the carryover of that. And when we say Luciferian space aliens, we're saying all those that were renegades or descendants of those renegades in mind and body. And uh, who are working hard against the next level right now. Now the next level still uses them and brings them back and then allows them or allows, allows a new crop of them to hide underground. Or, or on another planet in the, gra in the ground, or on a, on a space station uh, during the recycling of the Earth when uh, uh, most of the, the plants that were, had become weeds because they were totally self-indulgent and uh, had no, uh, no sense of a greater plan by greater beings and so basically were just devouring everything they could in their past for their own satisfaction and their own growth, whether that's in families, you know, because weeds travel in families too. You know, if you look at the weeds that are pervasive uh, around the planet, they will choke anything around them uh, in order to survive and are very hard to get rid of. So the next level gets rid of them periodically because they're also in human form, of course, and uh, and so uh, during that recycling, uh, these Luciferians are forced by the circumstances that are happening on the surface and in the immediate atmosphere of the planet um, that they will not survive if they don't hide from. And so they basically go underground. And... Uh, and many of them are probably consumed underground by lava flows and, and who knows what forces that is basically being consumed by fire. So that's what the physical aspect of hell is, which also affects the spiritual or mental uh, framework and structures, living, uh, existing structures, because they're really not living structures unless they have a potential to live uh, after death of the physical body that they had. Uh, so a spirit of a human that never was seeded with a next level soul pocket and never received a next level mind is going to be uh, recycled almost entirely. I say almost entirely because like I said in the previous uh, uh, video, um, uh, the next level may keep a certain amount of uh, human level spirits um, as programs to assist in the early growth of uh, uh, the next crop of uh, souls that they were going to bring back to interface with uh, a new strain of human vehicles that um, uh, were to that have to be a match for the the soul. So in other words, the, when you say match, Tiendo used that word that the vehicle, the physical vehicle, needed to be a match for the uh, soul that was coming back for their development, for the lessons that they've learned. So if they learned, if they overcame gender identity, which you could, which those said that uh, homosexuals have overcome, and that would include uh, anybody that's attracted to the same sex uh, more than or exclusively rather than both sexes. They, they have fully overcome the consciousness of gender uh, differences. 
And so, uh, but they, but if they're still engaging in sexuality, then they haven't overcome sexuality. And sensuality, uh, sexuality is a part of sensuality. Other forms of sensuality are uh, food sensuality or any of the any of the senses that we gravitate to, including the sensory system of uh, the brain and our ego and our pride and our um, our, our self, our ability, our th- a desire to be something special and to be famous and to be uh, um, uh, looked up to by others and uh, to be uh, a leader and uh, all those desire to be the top of our game or to be you know uh, the greatest competitor or the greatest uh, artist or the, or you know even equivalent to the greatest you know just you know be up there uh, to to where we think of ourselves as um, very self-important. Um, even if we know we're not, we, we get addicted to all, all the uh, gratitude and, and uh, uh, worshiping, basically, the service that other people give to us. And so then basically we've, mel- we've built ourselves into a human uh, false god, god because we're not really uh, uh, above, we're not above human in any way shape or form at that point. So so Satan, the word actually in the Greek uh, uh, meant uh, adversary. And Tindo said that, uh, uh, which was the new crop of Luciferians uh, that were dead, uh, uh, or that the old Luciferians that were dead, I don't know, but mostly in discarded form, I believe, or they have some way of uh, uh, sending us uh, their uh, mind uh, through some technology so that uh, they get what they want out of humans and they gravitate towards the humans that have the most influence over others. But certain ones uh, are, will, are waiting for um, the surfacing of the next level who they think are just another alien group like themselves but just that they have more technology or they have uh, some things that the Luciferians haven't figured out yet, but they think they will, and uh, so that they so they motivate the humans to try to figure out the things that they already know are possible in space travel and genetic engineering, because they 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 their souls uh, spent some time in membership in the next level, and they saw how the garden worked. They saw how the next level monitored situations and observed and, and delivered information to the, to the garden and to the plants of the garden. Because the next level, just by their presence of their mind, which is a huge mind, and it's a very powerful mind, uh, literally, uh, in electromagnetic power, it's very powerful, but not, it's not in exactly the same way as radioactive, I don't believe. I don't th- believe it's detrimental to life, although there could be 